Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, my name is Janet. Welcome to this week's online service, our Palm Sunday worship. It's wonderful that you're with us. Now, if like me, you've not known with this weird spring weather that we're having, do I wear my sandals or do I put my big coat on? Do I do both? I'd like to tell you about the services coming up next week in Holy Week. Join us on Monday, Thursday, this coming Thursday at 7.30 Christchurch Bake Up. We'll be sharing Holy Communion. On Good Friday, we'll be joining with Christians from across the area as we meet at 11 o'clock at Trinity Baptist Church. And on Easter Sunday, April 17th, if you can be with us in person, we're meeting at 10.15 at Holy Trinity. Or head over to our YouTube channel at 10.30, where Derek will lead our Easter celebrations. And if you can make it in the week on Wednesday at 11.30, Experience Easter will be happening in the chapel at Central Methodist. And this will be followed by lunch, a soup lunch, from 12 to 1.30. And it's going to raise money for the really amazing project, M3. However you can join us over this coming Holy Week, it'll be wonderful to have you with us. So let's begin our worship today. Let's begin by singing Praise is Rising. Come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Join with me as we say together, God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. 
for the sake of Jesus who died for us. Forgive us for all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in God's loving forgiveness, let's share the peace. God has called us to live in peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our reading today is taken from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully, with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus often called people by saying, Follow me. We've just heard that the crowds of people followed Jesus to Jerusalem and we're going to meet a few of them now to find out why they were there and maybe to help us think about how we can follow Jesus more closely. The first group we meet are Jesus' disciples. They had all arrived in Jerusalem for the Passover feast. It was as though everything had been building up to this moment. Jesus insisted on riding into the city on a young donkey, which two of the disciples had gone to fetch earlier that morning. As Jesus rode on this donkey, crowds of people joined with the disciples, all shouting and throwing their coats down on the road. There had been plenty of crowds before, but not shouting and singing about Jesus being the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus himself seems quite solemn and serious. So what was going on? The disciples had been following Jesus for quite some time. They went everywhere with him and couldn't imagine life without him now. There were still many things they didn't understand though and the arrival in Jerusalem was very confusing for them. These disciples were very confused. The Pharisees had been watching Jesus with growing suspicion. They never knew what this teacher would do next. He even had the audacity to ride into Jerusalem on the back of a young donkey. The prophet Zechariah had said that that was what the Messiah, God's chosen one, would do one day. They thought that Jesus had done this as a way of claiming he was the Messiah. Also, the Pharisees were worried that the crowd seemed to believe in Jesus. As Jesus came closer, some Pharisees asked him if he was going to tell his followers off for singing and shouting things which implied he was the Messiah. But all he said was, if they were quiet the stones would cry out instead. What on earth was that supposed to mean? Wherever Jesus was, the Pharisees were never far behind. They wanted to see what he would do and say next. They weren't following him in the real sense of the word though. They were so busy trying to trick him or catch him out that they were blind and deaf to what he was really doing and saying and missed out on everything he came to offer them. All they could do that day in Jerusalem was criticise. We don't know if this person was in the crowd, 
But the owner of the donkey must have been pretty shocked when two disciples came into his yard and untied his youngest donkey without asking permission or anything. When he asked them what they were doing, they just replied, the Lord needs it. The owner didn't object as far as we can tell. Maybe he already knew Jesus or knew about him. In Jerusalem, everyone must have known something about him. That's why the crowd gathered so quickly. And stories about Jesus must have spread, about how he fed a massive crowd of people, and it even brought a dead man back to life. The donkey owner may have been really curious. There must have been others in that crowd like that, wondering what Jesus would do next. But in general, you could say that most of the crowd was joyful and certain that Jesus was the king who had come in the name of the Lord. But their certainty was not based on very much and soon it was to turn into quite the opposite emotion as they shouted for Jesus to be put to death. It was only after Jesus had died and come alive again in a new way that anyone could be certain who he was and what he had come to do. There may be some of us today who are confused. We've been following Jesus for some time, but there's much we don't understand, and we might just be puzzled. There may be some of us who have a critical attitude and have never quite let ourselves respond to Jesus' invitation to follow him. There may be some of us who are curious about Jesus, about who he is, and would like to respond to him. And there might be some who know they have met Jesus personally, are certain who he is and want to follow him even more closely. Let's just take a moment now and think, what is my response right now to Jesus? Whatever your response today, if you'd like to know more, if you'd like to explore more about what it is to follow Jesus, I would love to talk to you. My email is below the video today. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Join with me as we say together. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. We now come to our time of prayer. We're going to begin with the collect the special prayer for today and we'll join together at the end of our prayers with the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. Lord, we pray for our world. We pray especially for the marginal and the most vulnerable, those caught in conflict, those fleeing their homes, their friends and families nervously awaiting news, and all those who live with fear. Lord, we pray for those in power and those with power. Let compassion be our primary motivator, not greed. Motivate decision makers to act according to the needs of the most vulnerable, not the wealthiest. Inspire us to lift our voices to call for justice and mercy. Lord, we pray for our country, for those living in poverty, faced with the indignity of having to choose between the heating, food and filling up the car. We pray for those for whom coming energy bills are a source of fear and anxiety. Lord, we pray for our country, for those for whom the changes in the cost of living is an inconvenience but not a crisis. Let us attend to one another. Listen in good faith and advocate for the needs of the most vulnerable in our nation. Lord, we pray for those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. May they know your peace and your healing touch at this tough time. We pray for those who are separated from family and friends. May you comfort them. We pray also for those who are not safe at home who may be experiencing increased anxiety or depression at this time. May you comfort them. Lord, we pray for those that feel the loss of a loved one, for all those that mourn. Help those who grieve process their pain in this unsettling time. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for those known to us. Lord, as we enter this holy week, may we recognise your presence in those around us and your spirit abiding within us. May we seek out your will for our lives and learn where you need us to serve, wherever we find ourselves to be. May we take the time this holy week to stop, to pause. Help us, Lord, recognise the enormity of what Jesus came to do for us all. May we respond with grateful hearts and mind and give all we have to serve him in joyful thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As our Saviour taught, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. It'd be wonderful if you can join us at some point in the next week, Holy Week. And next Sunday, if you can join us online, 10.30, where Reverend Derek will be leading our Easter celebrations. That would be wonderful. 
that's our final song. Are you ready to sing? It's a classic. Give me oil in my lamp. blessing as we go into Holy Week. Lord God, you hold both heaven and earth in a single piece. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our anger and sorrow and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes and peace in our hearts. In Jesus Christ our Lord. May the King of glory and humility reign in your hearts, giving you courage, joy and hope in this holy week. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed are they that come in the name of the Lord. <laughs> 